7 million views. I can hardly believe it. You know, it seems like just yesterday I started this channel and since then it's grown quite a bit. The video quality has actually changed quite a bit as well. I remember recording my very first videos on a Latitude Dell D630 laptop, which was pretty old, still a good machine, with just a mic jack microphone that probably cost me $15. The audio quality was terrible. The video quality was terrible. I didn't even edit any videos. And then over time, you know, I gradually learned how to do things and I'm still learning now. And now I'm up to 7 million views. So I just wanted to thank you guys because this is awesome. And you might be wondering, you know, what's up with 7 million? Why not celebrate 10 million? Oh, believe me, I'll definitely celebrate 10 million. But I haven't been doing a good job of keeping up with analytics. I just like recording videos and sometimes I just don't like paying attention to all the small, trivial analytics details. I just want to hit the record button and start talking, basically. So I missed quite a few special occasions over the years that just totally passed me by. By the time I realized all these milestones that I've hit, it was too late. And then, you know, basically it was too late to make a video and celebrate it. But um, I wanted to make sure that I did celebrate this one. And, you know, I'm going to keep doing this on the road to 10 million views, which is where, you know, I'm hoping to reach here pretty soon. But another thing, you know, when, when it comes to the number 7 and 7 million, I mean, Final Fantasy 7 was the second best Final Fantasy game. So, you know, if nothing else, there's that. So in all seriousness, though, thank you guys very much. I really appreciate everything. Thank you for watching, subscribing, and being a part of this with me because I never thought that it would actually grow to 7 million. And I'm even approaching 60,000 subscribers, which is also a pretty big milestone that I think I'm going to hit pretty soon if I haven't hit it already. Also, guys, I just wanted to mention, please excuse the dust. I am trying to get the best video and audio quality that I can in the new studio. And I'm having a heck of a time getting everything perfect. The video quality isn't where I want it. The audio quality isn't where I want it. The lighting is terrible. I'm using a very cheap light. So please bear with me and give me your comments below and let me know what you think so far. Keeping in mind, it's still a work in progress. There's still stuff that I need to order to basically make the video quality and audio quality the best it can be. And then when I get everything done, I do plan on making a video showing you guys my studio. So that will come here pretty soon. Now, with that out of the way, I have in front of me the System76 Gazelle because quite often I'm asked, you know, what laptop are you using? And I'm probably using a different laptop in every video, it seems. I actually have four, five, at least five laptops in the house right now, not including this one. But System76 was nice enough to let me borrow this one to do a review. And I actually have to send it back today. I've already recorded the footage for the review and I'm in the process of editing that. This video is going to be uploaded sooner because I want to upload this one closer to the milestone. And after I get this one uploaded, I'll edit the footage for that review, which you will see very soon. So if you want to know what I'm using, well, here's your answer. It's a System76 Gazelle, a really awesome laptop. Stay tuned for the review. But with all that out of the way, I wanted to look into doing some feedback. I like to do this every now and then, just basically get some questions or comments that you guys leave in my YouTube channel among the various videos and just basically uh, give you guys my responses. So let's go ahead and do some quick Q&A and that'll wrap up the video. All right, here we go. We have Yukio Holix. I'm always probably going to be pronouncing these screen names wrong. Maybe some of them actually don't need to be pronounced. But basically they're saying, you know, when I try to create a USB stick, I click on any of the download mirrors and nothing happens. So by download mirrors, I'm assuming you're talking about Etcher, which is the video in question here. Um, some of these comments need to be a little bit more specific, but when I go here and download, it does work. So that's one of those things about creating YouTube content around technology. Technology is always changing. So for all I know, that website could have had a problem when he was trying to download that and maybe it, it wasn't working then, but it's working now. And it's just one of those things when you create this kind of content that I constantly run into. So here we have WR3ND. 
Uh, this individual left me a comment about their Debian experience with Debian Stable. And I'm not going to read the entire thing, but I just want to say that I really like reading things like this. I did read this comment, and I do enjoy hearing you guys uh, tell me your feedback when you use a distribution so I could find out what the experience was like for you. That was awesome. So this same person mentions, you know, can't you just update Debian with backports? And I, I think they might be referring to my comment about separating user apps from system packages. And there's two problems with Debian backports that I have with it. So first of all, I want to mention Debian backports is pretty cool because the Debian developers, they don't even have to do, to do that in the first place to make that available. And the fact that they do, uh, they need to be thanked for that because it's pretty cool. But on the downside, Debian backports is very inconsistent. When Debian backports launches, it barely has any packages in it. But that could be understood because they're just getting it going with each new release of Debian. But we never know what we're going to get. Uh, maybe we'll get a new kernel. Maybe we'll get a new kernel later. I've seen new kernels come in right away. And I've seen some, you know, not show up for a year. So you just really can't rely on Debian backports. It's not a very good solution. You're not even going to get the latest Firefox. And maybe it's there now, but last time I checked, it wasn't. So um, it's very hit or miss when it comes to what packages in particular it may or may not include. But that goes against my point, though. User space applications, when I say user space applications, I'm referring to Firefox, LibreOffice, your text editors, things like that. I don't think that those packages should be found in the same um, method that your operating system or distribution packages are basically installed from. So in the case of Debian, I'll use that as an example. Um, you know, you can have your updates like your kernels and um, your libraries and things like that all happen via apt and Debian packages. I don't really think that should ever change. That should always stay, this ca stay the case because it's awesome and it's a good way to do it. But when it comes to user space applications like Firefox and LibreOffice, I think that those types of applications should be in their own completely separate system for managing packages because I think that those two types of things should be separated. And if you think about it, in other operating systems, Mac OS is an example of this, the operating system installation method and update method is completely separate from how you install applications. And I think that's how it should be because if you have the same system like Debian packages used to install user applications, they might require libraries that conflict with system libraries and worse, you might not even get new applications at all until the next version of the distribution. For example, Debian will not give you the new version of LibreOffice ever until you update to the next version. I'm referring to Debian Stable specifically because I want to make that clear. Debian Stable is their normal release, and I'm talking about normal releases here. And that's an important distinction that you don't get the new applications until your entire operating system goes to the next version. And that to me is just plain silly. So in Debian 11, you'll get the new version of LibreOffice at that time, but you'll be stuck with what you have now until then if you don't use any other method to install applications. And I just don't really feel like that's a good idea. Most people don't want to be locked into the same application or at the very least, they might want to selectively update one. Maybe they don't want the latest bleeding edge software, but maybe they do want the latest LibreOffice or the latest Firefox, and maybe those things will be included in Debian backports, but we don't know. And I still think that they should be outside of even Debian backports. I use a completely different system on my end. I use app images. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that real quick. So using LibreOffice as an example, I'm just going to Google LibreOffice app image. And I'll go ahead and click here and let's go ahead and download it and I'll show you guys what this is. So I'll download fresh. I'll just do the basic edition. There's other editions here, but that's not the point. So I'll go ahead and download this. Go ahead and save it. All right, looks like that's about done. Now I actually don't have LibreOffice installed on this laptop because my scripts actually remove it because I prefer to use the app image version. But what I'm gonna do is open up a terminal and I'm going to go into the downloads directory. Do an ls, and we see LibreOffice is right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and chmod that. And you could do this through the GUI as well. I'm just a terminal person. And then I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And we have LibreOffice. I didn't even need to open the package manager at all. 
And if I go to help and then I go to about, we can see that I am on literally the absolute latest version. And that's how I can get it without actually having to add a PPA, a different repository or anything like that. This is my preferred method, but there's other methods. There's other ways of getting the latest software. So basically just use whatever method works best for you. But I think that's what that person was commenting on was my comment about the repositories not always having the greatest or latest software. So that's just something to keep in mind. Debian Stable is a great distribution, don't get me wrong. It's just not for everyone, but it is solid. And it is recommended, but you know, when it comes to managing your applications, if the underlying distribution locks you to old versions, then you just have to take matters into your own hands. All right, let's go back here to the comments. So scrolling down a little bit, we have Sebastian saying, System D is a serious reason not to use Arch Linux. What a pity. I really don't like comments like these. Uh, first of all, this comment is completely untrue. System D is awesome. There's a lot of controversy surrounding System D because people generally don't like change. And I understand if you have a preferred init system, maybe you don't want to use System D because you just have your preference and that's totally fine. But System D is not a reason to not use Arch Linux. It's a consideration in what distribution you ultimately want to go with. System D is a great solution and i don't really agree with any of the negative comments that i've heard so far so when this person says what a pity uh, it's definitely not it's actually a benefit to arch linux and i highly recommend checking that out and i also have system d videos on my channel if you'd like to educate yourself a little bit more on that so moving right along and in this comment here um, this person is commenting about permissions and ownership and just, he says, just one thing I am thinking about is, for example, in Windows, you can individually assign multiple users to a folder, but I sense that in Linux, they have to be in a group. And that's true. So the permissions in Windows and Linux are completely different and managed in a different way. So I would say that comment is basically proving that individual is paying attention and learning and asking good questions. So that's just a part of it. So good for you. Yeah, it is different. It is a little bit strange. But once you get used to it, you know, it kind of starts to make a little bit more sense. Alex comments, you have a new subscriber. Welcome, Alex. Great to have you. Thanks for the video series. And Alex is referring to my Ubuntu Server Essentials series. And I'm really glad to see this comment because I don't really get very many comments because I don't get really many, very many views on that series. I'll never understand why. I put a lot of work into it. And that's kind of one of those things about YouTube. You never really understand. Like some video series, you think, oh man, this is going to be huge. Um, everybody's going to be watching this and then not really, not very, very many people watch it. And then, um, you know, the ones you don't think will do well do amazing and everything in between. So it's good to see that this series is starting to get some comments. Maybe it's going to start to climb a little bit and more people will actually be watching that. And here I have a comment. Laptop temperature rises hotter after installing Mint 19.2, even though when using Windows, it's not that hot. Unless you're playing a game or opening a heavy application, how is the solution? So without knowing your laptop model, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot I can do. Now, generally speaking, what I find is that sometimes there's proprietary components in computers. If they're shipping with Windows, then their quality assessment is basically against Windows. And most manufacturers don't really care if it works on Linux or not. I wish we lived in a perfect world where, you know, Linux works on everything. And a lot of people will tell you Linux does work on everything. Well, maybe it works on most things, but not everything. Let's face it, no software is 100%. So maybe the fan controller is proprietary and is managed in some weird ways. I've seen it. So it could be possible that when you switch over to Linux that it's just not managing the fan the same way. And you could also look into CPU scaling because it could be that it's just staying on the default governor, maybe full power. Go ahead and check that. I'm not sure how to do that in Cinnamon. I know that there's a plugin for GNOME you can use, and it's made quite a bit of a difference for me. Um, so just basically check out some plugins or how to do CPU scaling, and you should be in good shape. But the problem is, like I said, 
if it's made to run on Windows, we have no guarantee it's going to run on Linux. And without knowing the model, I can't research that for you. So if you're going to run Linux on anything, you should research it first because you might actually find it's not fully compatible and that's not a good experience. So definitely keep that in mind when you want to run Linux. I love Linux, but you know, you do, you do have to make sure that it's going to work before you go ahead and install it. So there you go. That was my quick feedback video and also um, a video celebrating 7 million views all in one. So, um, you know, I hope that was fun. I'll do more QA a little bit later on. So stay tuned for that. And of course, stay tuned for my System76 Gazelle review, which I am editing right now. And I hope to have that up probably next week. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.